All right, in this video, we are going to be looking at the start to finish relationship in a network diagram and also in a Gantt chart. First of all, the start to finish relationship is not the most useful thing or even practical or realistic, but it's, uh, it is a certain type of logic that can exist in a project for planning and scheduling, so we are going to just take a brief look at it anyways. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and we'll set up our Gantt chart for this uh, three activity project. So the first activity in the project would obviously be activity A because it has no predecessor and its duration is three. So we start at zero at the very beginning of the project and just go one, two, three. So this would be to the end of day three. Next up we have activity B. Its predecessor is A, but it's a start to finish relationship with a lag of five. That means that B can finish five days after a starts. If it was just a regular start to finish relationship, it would just be B can finish when A starts, but that's hardly a, a realistic thing. So I just put some lag in here for the example. Uh, so with that said, A starts, and, and the reason it's five days is because that five there has a lag of five days. So A starts at zero here. So we're, we're going to go five days into the future. So one, two, three, four, five. Now this is the point, according to the start to finish relationship with the lag of five, uh, is where B can finish. So we'll mark that. Uh, but B has a duration of three days. So if it finishes on at five, then it's going to start three before that. So one, two, three. So its earliest start would be here at two. Um, now the next one we have, this is just activity C, depends on B, it's just a regular finish to start relationship. Again, if there's no letters here, you just know it's just a regular finish to start relationship. So C can start as soon as B is done, and it's a duration of four. So we're going to go from five, we'll go one, two, three, four, up until the end of day nine, and that will finish off our project for us. So next thing let's do is let's take a look at what the PDM network diagram would look like for this project. So now once we have the predecessors in, we have to just double check which type of relationships aren't regular finish to start relationships. So it will be the arrow that's leading from A to B because B depends on A with a start to finish relationship uh, with the lag of five. So we will denote that over the arrow. We'll have start to finish five, SF5 to denote that. Remember from previous videos, alternatively, we could have written, drawn the arrow actually going from the start of A to the end of B, and you can even write it like that with a five on top, but I don't like that in a, in a larger network diagram. It gets confusing, although it does visually show you a, the, the lag goes from the beginning of this guy to the end of this guy. Uh, I prefer to just uh, keep it with a straight line with the, the label above it. So let's get rid of that. Um, and let's look at this arrow. This is just a regular finish to start relationship because C just depends on B. There's nothing fancy about that. So let's go ahead and we'll do our forward pass on this network diagram. So A starts at zero, it's at the beginning of the project. We'll add the duration, so we'll get its earliest finish will be three. Now when we're looking at B, to find the early start or the early finish, we have to figure out uh, how to incorporate the start to finish relationship and the lag of five. Well, the start to finish, as we just drew that, uh, that little line on here, the finish of B is five days after the start of A. Or you can think of it the other way, like activity A has to start five days before uh, activity B finishes because of the lag and the start to finish relationship. So with that said, you have to just add five to the start of A and that will be the end of B, the earliest finish, right? Because B finishes five days after A starts. Okay, now if B f finishes on day five or at the end of day five and it's three days long, to find the earliest start, we have to subtract three from five. So five minus three B will start on two for its earliest start. Now looking at activity C, this is just a regular finish to start relationship. So we'll bring that five from the early finish of B into the early start of C. Five, and then we'll add the duration, five plus four is nine. Now for the backward pass, we just bring the nine down because this is the last activity in the project uh, and subtract the duration from it to get five for its late start. And then because this is just a regular finish to start relationship, we'll bring the five over and subtract the duration to get Two. Now looking at this, again we know that the start of A has to be five days before the finish of B. So with that said, we subtract five from the, the end date of B, so we'll have five minus five. That will give us zero for the late start of A. Uh, and that didn't say anything about the late finish, but to find that out, if we know that A is three days long, we can just add the late start plus the duration and find that its late finish is also three 